that is the expectation of those days but now that is not the expectation but what Paul is saying very clearly okay in uh, 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 he is say, saying because he comes from a rabbinical order be imitated, imitators of me ennai polave maarungra the rabbinical training like he learnt it be imitators of me as I am of Christ so I am imitating Christ you imitate me if you are struggling to imitate Christ first start imitating me that is what Paul is saying you understand so that is how you understand this journey okay and Jesus in Luke chapter 6 verse 40 he said a pupil a disciple is not about this teacher don't think you have become greater than your teacher. You have never become greater than your rabbi. But everyone, after he has been fully trained, after 18 to 20 years of full training, he will be like his teacher. So the maximum that he can, a student can achieve is the teacher's ability. He, he will become like that teacher. Oh, you come from that rabbi? Oh, he, yes, he pretends like that. That is the way they... He come from Oxford? Oh, he come from Harvard? Oh, Stanford? Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Do you understand? The university has molded that person in the five years to such a standard. When he is presenting a case, he has the right arguments, quality, data, presentation, skills. Huh? Justifications. He can win an argument. Okay. The person coming from Western Sydney University may not be able to tackle the Harvard University guy. Why? He has been molded with certain skills. He has watched those professors very closely. How they are presenting their course I, subject. Hmm? And what they are referring what minute details that Harvard professor and Oxford professor is referring will be very very different to the Western Sydney University professor. I am not putting these people low, but I am just, even in these days you have to compare and study. Comparative study should be there. Do you understand? Children are you listening? Okay? Who, what should you aim for? Western Sydney because we, you take a bus and you go and get down very easily in front of the uh, reception and you can enter. That is not your goal. Even if you have to take a flight, choose the best one. Gamaliel was the Oxford University. Paul chose the Oxford University. John Wesley comes from Oxford University. Do you know that? The founder of Methodist. Who do you think he's just a nomad? He comes from Oxford University. Of those days, 200 years back, when only the royals could go for education, this man was educated. The prayer group that was started in Oxford University burst into a great revival. George Whitfield brought a revival in the American colonies. He was an Oxford University student. And they all, John Wesley and his brother and George Whitfield were all prayer group members in those days. Just one or two year difference people, but in the same prayer group. God still uses university students. Hallelujah. So be imitators. Paul says, imitate me. I, if I get a good professor to learn from, I will start imitating him. The best way is to imitate. And then customize your, it to your own ability. Huh? And shine with your own capabilities. But start imitating. You know how children learn? They imitate their father and their mother. That is how they they learn. That is why they are good learners. Imitation is a skill. Okay? So nowadays imitation is used for teasing people. Right? Speaking like that actor, this actor. Huh? That is useless imitation. This is Christ-like imitation. Good imitation. Coming from within. When you start doing that every day, when you start being kind to people every day, what happens? You will become a kind person. Am I right? Hmm? Okay, good imitation is good. Okay. And in 2 Timothy, Paul says, verse ch uh, chapter 2, verse 2, he says, The things which you have heard from me, O disciple, 
I'm adding that to this argument, okay? In the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men. Who should be, whom should you train to? Faithful people. That's why I don't encourage everyone into ministry. Do you know that? There are people who are just encouraging all, all people, good, bad, ugly, ellatime. Never do that. Dangerous. Dangerous. I've seen dangerous people entering into ministry. Why? They have not assessed the person. So Paul is very clear. Very clear. My dear, don't encourage everyone. Encourage only the right people who are followers of Jesus Christ. It's a serious business. To stand in the pulpit, to worship the Lord, to do ministry is not a playful thing. It is a very, very serious business. You are dealing with fire. Moses dealt with fire. Am I right? And the fire is a very strict fire. <laughs> God is a very demanding God, very strict. He will do anything. So, not everyone should be encouraged. Teach them, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Who will not contain secrets of God, the beautiful things of the scriptures within them. They will open their hearts, pour out whatever they heard, whatever they learned. Do you understand? The first thing a disciple should do is to open his heart and teach others. Huh? You are in the right position. When you start loving Jesus more than your father and mother, you will start expressing the pure love upon them. Your first priority should be upon Jesus and through Jesus you have to start loving others. You understand? That is the best love that you can give to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 it says, No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So, it's not about hate, hating the other thing, but it's about the choice, the priority. You have to choose Jesus upon everyone. Okay? That is very important. Do you agree? Huh? Okay? So, as I told you, in the Bible teaches very clearly about Women being disciples of God. In Titus chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. What is the expectation from the Holy Spirit? Older women likewise ought to be reverent. Ought to be respectful. In their behavior. Not malicious gossips. Nor enslaved to much wine. Teaching what is good. So that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands. To love their children. To be sensible. To be pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husband so that the word of God will not be honored. This is the motherhood that the Bible is teaching. The early church exercised and trained huh, the young women in the church. Okay? There was a discipleship happening among the women. Am I right or not? This age will not understand this Bible verse clearly. Okay? Because now the, the, the lifestyle of women have tremendously changed in our generation, right? So now you will not appreciate Paul's wordings. But you should understand it in the context. So, the whole society, you know, it is built by women. My goodness. Yes. The woman, the mother is the one who brings up the children. And they become the future society, whether it's a boy or a girl. They become the future society. We are all brought up by mothers. <laughs> Am I right? So, older women, when you, when you see a younger woman in the church, huh, in your faith community, what should you do? Whatever. First of all, you as an older woman should be a respectful person. A person of respect. You cannot gossip. And you should, when you start gossiping, huh, you lose respect. So the first thing is your language. How you speak, what you speak matters. So your, you, the, your respect is very important. First of all, a disciple is a very respectful person. And that too, among the women, it is expected to be of respectful people. Okay? And, 
okay and you should not drink too much wine lose your mind so keep your mind clean because there are young women who need your advice you have the responsibility of building a clean society you are the builders of the society so you have to be respectful you shouldn't drink too much you shouldn't get intoxicated huh? and you have to be a teacher to young women hallelujah so when a young girl huh, is getting misled in her life okay what should you do gossip spread that thing no what should you do you have to become the mother you have to go and embrace her protect her from evil and take her and guide her counsel her child this is not good mom we have come through all your age and god's word is saying this huh? let's pray i'm here as your friend i will guide you and protect you and stand for you huh? okay there are evil people in this world who will huh? mislead you who will abuse you so you have to be careful so do you understand motherhood you need not be a mother of that particular child to become a disciple maker do you understand am i right or not that is the early church my dear brothers and sisters i i most of the people huh, who are not coming to church or hurt by the church by the people in the church they are hurt that's why they are running away from the church they love jesus but they don't love the church because they are they were hurt once do you understand so they are young there will be young women who will be huh, pulled by the emotions huh, by, by all the temptations of this world but you as a respectful woman you need not be called as a deaconess or a elder or a pastrama to do that never think that you need a title if you think you have to be called as pastorama to do this type of thing you wouldn't understood discipleship of the new testament you don't need a title better avoid titles do anything but become a respectful woman who doesn't gossip okay but goes and helps try for look pray for opportunity to, to help another young girl you will be a, you are a mother that is the mother we celebrate you understand that is the motherhood i celebrate hallelujah you understand hmm? okay time is getting over be a positive example okay okay so encourage that young girl young women to love their husbands so not to hate their husbands from the day one huh? not to call their husband vada poda no no respect respect your husband and the husbands even more difficult thing love your wife respect also you can give my dear brother. i'm telling you the fact love true love is more challenging more challenging i tell you huh husbands <laughs> very difficult but you have to love your wife okay so love their husbands now here women also love your husbands and children and teaching them to control themselves in every way and to be pure train them train the young women to manage their household okay still the house building responsibility hasn't shifted from the women according to the scriptures so don't expect me to give a huh, uh, different uh, new age sermon i'm not called to i'm whatever in the bible i can teach you okay your yeah, house building kudumbathai kattugira porpu yaar edathil irukkina pengalude karangal la da irukku anda valayil potta modaram potta karangal la da kartha koduthirukra correct ah god has given that responsibility to build the household to the women man cannot do that man is not built for it okay so train them to manage the household to be kind and to be submissive to their husbands oh my goodness how can you write such a word man paul you are in trouble with women okay so when you enter into the eternal life you catch hold of saint paul and question him but whatever he has written is breathed by god now attested by god it has become the word of so submit yourself to your 
husband. It, you'll, your family will be much stronger. Okay? It will hold together. It will stick together. It will glue together when the submission glue is there. Do you understand? Anyway, the husband has to protect the wife and the children, feed the children, feed the wife, huh? lead them. That is also another responsibility that is difficult. But for you, train them to manage the household, to be kind and to be submissive to their husbands, all of which. So this is where Paul is. He puts all these things, packages and tells all of which will honor the word of God. Hallelujah. Even if you don't like to be submissive to your husband just for the sake of honoring the word of God. Deny yourself. Because Jesus said, deny yourself. Until unless you deny yourself, you will not be my disciple. Being a disciple is a painful journey. Women, if the submission is causing you pain, maybe that is the cross that women are carrying. I am not saying it is easy. I am, not, I am not putting this cross upon you. I have no right to do that. And I have no strength to do that. Because it is very difficult to, sometimes to submit yourself to some husbands, right? Very difficult people are there. But to honor the word of God. See, this is how I am looking at this verse. So I am openly saying this, okay? Even though it is painful, even though with tears, even if the husbands are not good, if, even if they don't respect you, you start respecting them. Through your respect and love, one day they will be saved. They are purified by your faith. The Bible says, your faith will purify your husband. Think about it. Think about it. Such power you have. You can build the house for eternity. You are not building only for you know, the society. There is another society there. For that society you are building. Do you understand your responsibility? Your ministerial responsibility is also there. When we were worshipping, you mentioned about Mary and Martha. There are two types of mothers. One, looking after all the hospitality, kitchen work, cleaning work, eh, everything. But God was, Jesus was impressed with the other mother, other, other woman who was seated at the feet. So, she was honoring the word and she got the acknowledgement. You understand? And Martha was said, you need not be so anxious about all the other stuff. Even though Martha was trying to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So there are two types of motherhood. One thing you can do all hundreds of things. Hmm? And serve the Lord. That is also service. But there are things that you have to be seated with the word of God. That's a spiritual service that you have to do. Okay, that Mary was doing it. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters, particularly women, God bless you. I know that many women are broken vessels. I know there is a great shortage for women ministers. I acknowledge that in this pulpit. And I want every woman here to rise up to that occasion and serve the women of this world, of this generation. I beg you to do that. I am not asking, I am begging you to do that. Please, rise up and Serve the women. They are broken by men. Their own children. Their own father. Their own their, the whole system damages them daily. They feel insecure. Do you understand? Women are insecure people. They can't rely upon many people around them. They are used and misused people. They need care. They are searching for one honest man in their life. Do you understand? That is their condition. They need care. So they need respect. My dear brothers and sisters, will you, at least women, I am asking women only to serve women. Not men. Okay? Women, if you will identify yourself to serve this women, then we can celebrate this Mother's Day. Otherwise, we are also just fun party, party people. The generation, huh? It's just fun party. That is not the church that we are trying to build. That is not the community I am trying to build. If I am doing that, I am fooling myself and I am getting ready for a very serious judgment. Okay. So if we, one person is ready to commit tonight, 
to serve the women of this world. Okay, in some manner or other. Okay, there are women who go and serve only the prostitutes. Do you know that? There are young women who committed to such ministry. Do you think that a man can do that? No. Only a woman can go and touch that broken vessel, speak to that person, pull them out slowly from that way of life. Okay? When Jesus was ministering, he did that job to pull out the prostitutes from that way of life. And she became a great disciple. Mary Magdalene was once a prostitute, then became a saint. Carrie saw the, she is the first witness of the resurrected Christ. Peter missed it, but a prostitute turned believer and disciple caught it. Hallelujah! That is the Jesus we are serving, my dear brothers and sisters. And she is the one who told the disciples the message that Jesus is resurrected. 